There is an expression in the wasteland, Old World Blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past, they can't see the present, much less the future, or what it is. Hello fellow Lobotomites, this is Kato Genesis, and welcome to the guide of unique and rare equipment for the Old World Blues expansion for Fallout New Vegas. I say unique and rare, because for the equipment of Big Mountain, instead of one of a kind there may be two of the same item, or variants and upgrades, of the equipment you can obtain. If that is the case, then I will show you the easier of them to find. Like previous guides, this will be by progression of the three quests you begin with at the Think Tank. And with the help of the wiki, I will be showing you the basic stats of each item. During the wonderful starting dialogue with the Think Tank, they give you a couple of items to help you survive in Big Mountain. The first is the Sonic Emitter Revelation, which upon a critical hit, it will paralyze the enemy for 10 seconds. As for Revelation's damage output, it seems to be somewhat low at 31. However, all variants of the Sonic Emitter will have 20 bonus damage towards power armor and robots and the rest of the frequencies I will list off near the end. There are a couple sets of glasses that are also in the think tank and are really easy to miss. First of which would be Dr. Klein's glasses. These are next to the stairs on the left side with a table with a chemistry set on it. Dr. Klein's glasses will increase your repair skill by five and your damage threshold and intelligence attribute by one. Now, if you head upstairs on the right side of the think tank, you'll find an average locked door that leads to Dr. Mobius' old room. It is in here and on the floor that you will find his glasses. These also increase your damage threshold by one, but give you a grand explosive skill bonus by 10 and raise your intelligence by two. It's pretty clear which set of eyewear is better. After you are done with the think tank, start heading east to the X8 Research Center. It is in here and after so many data retrieval tests for Dr. Boros that you can get the EM pulse upgrade for your sonic emitter, as well as the Gabe's bark frequency. Leave X8 for now, but we will be returning once we have the key to the kennels. And go Go southwest to the Y-17 medical facility. Once inside, next to the auto dock that is taking center stage, will be Christine's COS recon armor. This slightly darker, unique set of recon armor has an increased damage threshold by 2 to 19 and raises your sneak skill by 5. Now that energy barriers are no longer a problem, right at the entrance to the room with the holding cells, you will find one of the two existing sterilizer gloves, the other being found on a unique enemy called Super Ego. The sterilizer glove is one of the four variants of the scientist glove, has a base damage of 21, has a lowered critical multiplier from 1.5 to 1, but as a nice trade-off, a critical strike with this glove will set the enemy aflame. Being a fire-based weapon, its base damage is affected by the pyromaniac perk. It may be too hot to handle for some, but not for us couriers. Next, we go to the hazmat testing ground to the northwest of X8. At first glance, you'd think you saw a ghost. And though it says there is a required passcode, with the EM pulse upgrade, you won't need one. The suit itself will give you a damage threshold of 11 and an outrageous poison resistance of 85, while the cowl will give you a damage threshold of 2 and night vision. Imagine wearing that for decades. Forgive me for jumping around, but we now head to X-13 research facility to get us some Mark II stealth armor. From the entrance of X-13, take care of that energy barrier with your sonic emitter. In this small storage room, you will find the key to the kennels of X-8 in a suitcase. Continue forward and gather up the gloves, boots, and chest piece of the Stealth Suit Mark II. You may think this is far too easy until you learn about its firmware upgrades and the fact that it has a personality. You're my best friend forever. The Stealth Suit begins with a damage threshold of 14 and a sneak bonus of 15. Take part in all of the tests and you're rewarded with a firmware upgrade for each. If you complete all of them, the suit will provide a sneak of 25 a bonus of 1 to your perception and your agility, and increase your movement speed while crouched by 20%. There is only one statistic downfall to this armor, it is that this is medium armor, so sadly light armor perks will not work with the Stealth Suit Mark II. Even so, this will keep you well hidden, well protected, and healthy. After you finish in Test Area 1 of X-13, notice adjacent to it is a locked room marked Test Area 2. If you have a lockpick skill of 75, you can let yourself into a room that looks like this. Still embedded in one of the skeletons is a protonic inverse axe. This is not unique or rare really, being it can be found on enemies at random. However, this is an upgrade from the Proton Axe, as it does 8 more damage with a slightly higher AP cost. And like other electrical weapons, does 50 bonus damage to robotic enemies, and 20 extra damage to enemies in power armor. We now go southeast to the Z43 Toxins plant, to pick up one of the two existing corrosive gloves. Just inside you will see it on the right on a shelf. Being another one of the special glove variants, at the same base damage of the Sterilizer Glove at 21, the Corrosive Glove does acid damage upon a critical hit, at 2 damage per second for 5 seconds. Unlike Poison which affects only living things, now you are not limited to which faces you can melt. 
If you head south from Z43, you may soon notice two massive cannons marking the location X7A left field artillery launch. There are not really any uniques, rares, or variants here. However, if you test fire one of the cannons, it will open up a crater that will have something loot worthy within. For now, head southeast to the X2 transmitter antenna array for the last item you need to bring back to the think tank. At the very top of this array, you will locate the X2 antenna. What better use for a bulky antenna than to beat things with it? The X2 antenna has a base damage of 65 and has that lovely natural shock damage bonus, a critical damage of 23, and a standard critical percentage of 1. I don't think any opponent would want to be on the business end of this antenna. A short distance northeast of X2, you should see what looks like a warehouse called Higgs Village. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice that these are the houses of the scientists of the think tank, long abandoned since they took up their new forms. What we're looking for is in the house marked 101. Upstairs in the office, you'll find Dr. Klein's glove, and in the bedroom, you'll find his scroll on top of a wardrobe. Dr. Klein's glove is physically the hardest hitting scientist glove there is, from 21 damage to 34, and also the highest critical chance multiplier of 3. On a standard hit, this will reduce the enemy's energy weapon skill by 5, and their strength by 2. On a critical hit, strength is further reduced by 1, along with damage threshold. Certainly one way to knock some science into someone. Moving on to Dr. Klein's scrubs, these will give you a damage threshold of 4. Increase your science skill by 10 and your intelligence by 2. Before you leave, make sure to pick up the jukebox personality in house number 108. But I'd like to mention that there's something useful in all of them, so keep an eye out for those holotapes. Head north now to X7B, and if you recall, the round that we fired from X7A landed here in Boomtown. Within the crater is a footlocker, and inside this footlocker you will find the Atomic Valance tri Radi Oscillator. This provides a damage threshold of 4, increases your endurance by 1, and gives you health regeneration. If you can put up with sporting a strange look, this is worth keeping for survival purposes, especially for you hardcore players. So I delayed speaking of the K9000 that you get at the beginning meeting the think tank, because now you can go into X8 and into the kennels to get the blueprint for Fido. After getting this, you need only find a workbench and upgrade your K9000 Cyberdog gun to a much more powerful version. Instead of using 357 Magnum rounds, it now uses 44 Magnum rounds, increasing overall base damage by 10 to 36. Sadly, the rest of the numbers are pretty much the same, except for AP cost, which has been increased by one. Head far to the north to Elijah's Watch. It is here in a makeshift campsite that's well defended that you will locate Elijah's jury-rigged Tesla cannon. This is the halfway point between the Tesla cannon and the Tesla beaten prototype, coming in at a damage of 85, and doing the same 20 electrical damage per second for two seconds. It has zero weapon spread, which the other Tesla cannons cannot boast. An intimidating concept to any robots nearby. Speaking of Elijah, on the western side of the crater you'll notice a place called Little Yangtze. You'll see a little outpost on one side, and one out of two of Elijah's advanced layers here. At first glance what you'll see is the decreased magazine size, but the advanced layer is also compatible with the regular layer mods, specifically the prismatic lens mod. Instead of splitting the beam into three, it maintains a single beam, which will do 84.5 damage after the upgrade, which you can purchase from the Sync Central Intelligence Unit after you get the upgrade for that, which is at the Signal Hills transmitter. In Little Yangtze though, across the way in a decrepit building, you can find Christine's COS silencer rifle, the first and only unique sniper rifle that comes with a suppressor. This trumps other sniper rifles in just about every aspect, weighing in at a base damage of 62, a critical multiplier of 2.5, and a sizable AP cost of 38 for a trade-off. Taking out foes silently at long range has never been so easy. Once you are finished at the camp, you can head north to the X-17 meteorological station. In here you can find the snow globe for Big Mountain, as well as a few protonic inversal throwing axes. You find these on a unique Mr. Gutsy called Iron Belly. Now these are unique as there is only so many that show up in the game, but showing in the other locations is purely by chance. These even surpass their larger counterpart in terms of damage, and with that have a bonus of 1.5 extra damage to limbs. In each playthrough you may get 10, you may get 20 to 25. It all depends on if the enemies are feeling generous, and giving you another way to kill them, that is. We now go to the final location, the Forbidden Zone Dome. Once you return to the think tank with all the items they deem important, they send you to face off with Dr. Mobius. I won't spoil any combat that may or may not happen, but I will say that when you end up in the dome that's somewhat identical to the think tank, on the left side of the main stairs, atop a table is Dr. Mobius' glove, and to the right of the stairs, in a trunk, is Dr. Mobius' scrubs. Dr. Mobius's glove is second in terms of damage to Dr. Klein's glove, but has rather different critical effects. Its standard effect reduces energy weapon skill like Klein's glove, and perception by two but on a critical hit, it causes knockback and makes your enemy frenzy. So with one well-placed sneak attack, you can clear a room with one or two punches. And that, my fellow lobotomites, is all the unique, rare, and varied stuff in Big Mountain. 
But we're not done yet. There are a total of five frequencies for the sonic emitter. Revelation, the one you start with, was already covered. Gabriel's Bark, which you find in X8, creates a knockback effect on a critical. Opera Singer is found in House 108 of Higgs Village and dismembers your enemy upon a critical hit. Tarantula, found in House 00 of Higgs Village, causes your enemy to burst into flames on a crit, and sometimes explode on a critical death and catch other enemies on fire. And finally, the Robo Scorpion emitter frequency, found in the Forbidden Zone Dome, will cause the enemies to explode for 100 explosive damage on a critical. That's not all. At the Sync Central Intelligence Unit, you can purchase more than one sonic emitter, having two or more different frequencies at a time. I think you see where I'm going with this. Say you combine Revelation with Tarantula, or Gabe's Bark with Robo Scorpion. What better environment than Big Mountain to test these out? If I seem to have missed anything, put it in the comments below, listing what it is and where to find it to help out your fellow couriers. And you know what to do if you want more content like this. This is Kato Genesis, thanks for watching, and only one road remains.